Good morning, Alexei. Good morning, Theo. How the devil are you this morning in this wonderful cafe? Very, very welcoming. Very, very good. We are at Cafe 11 on a Saturday morning. I've been for my leg workout, taking Peter to Saturday school and meeting my friend and, and colleague. Yeah. And good company. And I'm watching two people outside eating a hot panini. Uh, when it's 10 degrees with a dog next to them and they're absolutely as happy as you can be. He's pretty brave with the shorts, isn't he, in this weather? Brave or didn't think about it? Either or. So what are we talking about today, Anthea? Well, How should we the, start? The, before we started recording, you did comment on the fact that um, a year ago you and I were sitting here and we couldn't figure out why the vast majority of people just couldn't see the obvious truth that the way the government were responding to this fictitious threat was completely nonsensical. And you said, why can't people see this? Well, well let, let, if you don't mind, from my point of view, we take a half a back step on this. We are not suggesting that COVID-19 doesn't exist. We are not suggesting, well, I'm not suggesting that it's not real. I personally know of people at the moment, my boss and his wife have been double jammed, right or wrong, and I've had it recently, I'm having it now, and they are absolutely, they're really not in any great condition at the moment. Well, that's why and I they're going through the a fictitious right? threat, because, because it is a fictitious threat to the vast majority of people. Correct. Not, I mean, we've already said the average age of death is 82.4, which is above the average lifespan. Yeah, I was just looking for, for, for context. Mm, no, absolutely. That, Thank that you for all. that. Um, so th therefore, for the 99.9% .9 of us, the way it's been managed is, is catastrophically bad. And, and it brings me on to the topic of our last podcast, which is faith. And one thing I didn't make clear is, is although, of course, the requirement for faith is, is inbred genetically into us, because we need to be able to assuage our, our internal anxiety. Um, the trouble is, we don't know, because we've never had any true practice, who that we should have faith in. And, and therefore, we almost randomly choose, to, you know, based on our backgrounds, based on our environment, based on our, our psychology, on who to have faith in. So it could be, I have faith in this glass of alcohol, or I have faith in in that um, role model pop star, or I have faith in the authority figure prime minister. Okay. Um, so that's one of the key problems. And of course, religion sorts it all out for you because you have to have faith in an entity, which let's face it, they spent eons putting together. But we're, going, but we're going back to the statement that we made, which is relevant to this, to this conversation now, is everybody needs to be led. Everybody, exactly, Everybody needs to be led. Exactly. But then we've also covered before that for many years, in the UK as an example, that people, the populace of the country, really haven't been led either at all or properly, if I'm being, if I'm being benevolent. Well, which, which brings me on to, which brings me on to, um, how do you lead, mm -hmm. you see? And here's the other thing. The, 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 this, it's, it's amazing, if you understand human nature, how some principles just hold through from, from the beginning of time, such as the concept of scapegoating. Now, what, you know, how many times a day do you hear the phrase scapegoat? And yet, did you know it was actually, its origins are in the Old Testament, when, when Moses was told to sacrifice two lambs at the altar and in the end he only sacrificed one and was told he could let the other one go and that lamb was said to carry the sins of humanity and indeed right now in every single church the altar is a symbol of the sacrificial lamb which is obviously Jesus Christ well, of, of the original sacrificial well, lamb, the and Jesus then became a modern yeah. symbol of yeah. the sacrificial lamb, yeah. which is absolutely fascinating. Uh, and and of course, what what is scapegoating? It's 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 nowadays, it's because of course, what, it, what in in religious terms, it's oh, you can feel better about yourself because someone else took the blame. Now, the, the clever thing about religion, as I said, is the scapegoat is a symbol. 
And of course, your faith allows you to believe that it was real. There's the point of faith. It allows you to believe it was real and you then feel much better and your sins are absolved and then you can just be harmonious with God. Now, the trouble is without religion, you're still left with a human, with a human machinery and the psychological functioning. So we need leadership. We have our need for faith. There's a void. And we, we, there's a void, exactly. And we have the tendency, the, 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 the automatic reflex to want a scapegoat. And so now what we do is we find anything or anyone. So it can be in a person or an object or a group of people on which to discharge our negative feelings. And once we discharge it, we get a sense of affirmation and even self-righteous indignation. And of course, what you can then do is if you if that person that you scapegoated because you then objectify them you, you turn them into a villain the and inference then, is that there's also a hero even if both are fictional and illusionary which deflects the attention from your from your whatever you've done as a leader bad things with corruption but think about the most obvious you, you divert the attention to to another symbol and then def therefore deflecting the attention away well, from you well let's have a look at this you've got You've got now, what, what do we see now in every single day parlance? Covid heroes, Covid idiots. There you go. Exactly the same psychological principle and, it's, and that's why I use the term illusionary. Because this is all completely illusion based and unnecessary. Before, but, oh, but, 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 no. but, in a leaderless society, because democracies are nothing to do about leadership because it's rule of the rabble then what happens is the the the, the leaders so far in the 20th century 21st and 20th and 21st century have simply been re responding to what they think the electorate want to hear but now they've suddenly realized that they people like being led and quite frankly you can lead them with any rubbish at all you don't need to put too much effort into it. And again, the only reason that the leadership of the country, the government, have had to do that is because of social media, because suddenly they couldn't hide things anymore. Suddenly you have to justify yourself, because before they more or less did what they wanted. And you found out afterwards, either by going through it and finding out that that was a law and you couldn't do anything about it because it wasn't publicized, you just found it out because it was in the system. Uh, and now they have to, in it, well, kind of in by mistake or uh, by default because of the media, justify themselves. But then the comment I also made before we before we came online was, and I I, I'm, I, I nearly mean it literally. COVID is has been used as an excuse. So not just the comment you just made. COVID made the government gave the government a taste of that lovely power that. That, that, that addictive thing of, well, hang on a minute, if I can introduce these emergency laws without needing Parliament, and we can more or less do what we want, which is happening in every country in Europe, Germany included. Well, you see, that's exactly the point. We have been running a, a, um, um, a, a mixed, oh, I'm trying to find the word, we've been running, um, like Italy, a, a um, we don't have a majority, okay. a, a, a majority yeah. government, a, a coalition for years. And even they managed to pass it. Okay, well, I'll tell you why. Okay. Over the last 20 years, depression, which was the fifth commonest cause of illness and death, is now, is now the commonest. And I just strongly suspect that the main reason for that is social media and the poison it creates. Now, if you have an increasingly unhappy population with all this negativity swirling around in their minds, can you imagine the power of suddenly being told none of this is your fault and you can now feel self-righteous by wearing a mask and having a few jabs and socially distancing? Can I add something to that? Yes, you can. I don't think you can purely put that at the door of social media. From my experience in the last, I would say, at least 30 years, if not more, watching People run businesses from a very, very young age, big businesses, multi-million pound businesses. I very often, I would say 80% of the time, especially in the UK, sorry to say, more than let's say continental Europe, like Britain, Germany, maybe less so France, maybe less so Italy. 
is there's been a, and I'm talking about the hospitality business that I was involved in for nearly 30 years, there's been a lack of leadership. Now, why? Why? Because the people that were put in those roles was very often dead man shoes. The guys had to pass on, literally, or moved on. Right, you're next up in line. Whether you've got the skills or the attributes, that's absolutely irrelevant, because I have no time to go and recruit somebody. We'll bypass the laws, we'll put something in the local gazette or whatever it was to actually appease the laws of the land. You have to show that you're advertising in it publicly, but we're going to hire you anyway. Just wait a couple of weeks and you'll have a new badge and a new sticker above your door. Then you've got these people then managing tens and tens of thousands of people with different teams and different and businesses. And that politicians who have no qualifications. And that's another, another, level of, another level completely. Well, you do, but you see, it's all, I mean, you're right, society is... So that's why the media have had maybe more influence than they normally would have, because you do not have leaders of, of proper leaders or people with leadership qualities in influential and powerful positions at all, so then it gives the media more space yeah, to have that they influence. They fill the void because exactly. humans need leadership. And, and and of course, the thing is that you're, you're so right. Society has been disintegrating for years. And humans and, want to be liked. And That's right. And materialism, see, the, with, with the Industrial Revolution, you had increasing um, capitalism and materialism, and it's unregulated capitalism, unregulated materialism. Because the more the more materialistic you become, the less you the more inward looking you become, and the more dopamine hits you constantly want. I'll talk about dopamine hits. Look at what's happening with Facebook and uh, Mr. Zuckerberg, whatever his name is, has now created the was it the metaverse? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and now Facebook, the company actually that owns Facebook now has a different name. Ladies and gentlemen, we have lost the plot. <laughs> This is, forget about delusions of grandeur, this is ridiculous. I mean, if you had been told 20 years ago, you're going to have the owner of a media app that doesn't make money for 10 years, doesn't make a single penny, but is worth $40 billion at the time, and he's now making money finally only because they put ads in and waited for the day to happen, and then he's now created something called the Metaverse, I mean, it makes the Marvel comic heroes look... <laughs> no, but, but you see, the, the trouble with that is it's going to happen and people are going to live almost exclusively within that metaverse because they're going to work out how to give us physical sensations digitally. So now we're going back to leadership. We are not being led at all. We should be led by people now we're being led by an entity mm. and the trouble is so they, this is not a physical but, but, person but hang on they can only lead us with pleasure they can only lead us with dopamine but it's hits. not a person leading a country it is a thing a media an algorithm algorithm saying you know what we're not only filling the void we're taking over <laughs> you are i can you are furious aren't you you're you're smiling and laughing but you are very very angry you, I'm not angry, I'm just passionate. I, th I think what, 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 unless you do an anger, what annoys me is I'm not here to, 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 to uh, I don't have the philosophical mantra that I'm, I want to spread the word to everybody. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh, um, one of these people. However, life, we were talking about it just as I was getting my lovely coffee, thank you very much, was life is about the simple pleasures. It's about the family being close to you. It's about having a roof over your head. It's about having uh, um, creating memories. It's about being near your near your siblings. Uh, it's about enjoying the moment, being in the moment. That for me is really what life is about. Yeah, and being able to look back in 30, 40 years' time, and said, you know what? I have had no regrets. I've lived what I, I've lived the life the best way I could, and thank you very much. If it stops today, great. I'm, I'm happy, yeah? But then we've got all this, mind my French, all this BS, this absolute load of BS, and we're going back to the COVID illusion of power created by the invisible enemy, and then we have an invisible enemy called the metaverse, that's another one. You see, the, the government simply knows that... They're you, riding on the back of it. That you, can't, you, lead, doing. you lead when there's an enemy. There was a Second World War, or how many wars have been created subsequently just to get 
the necessary leadership. power and influence. The Falklands War is an example that did never needed to happen, ever. And Mrs. Margaret Thatcher said, you know what? Things aren't going quite the way I would like. I think we need to, <laughs> to literally get out the guns. <laughs> Mm. to bring the guns up. I, quite interestingly, just to... Uh, oh, in, no. in, and it's been proven later that that's actually true. In, in retrospect, I've, I've actually met uh, and talked with four of the world leaders. Um, so and so he won a president... Well, Gorbachev, he was President Gorbachev, wasn't he? So I had a chat with him. The USSR. I chatted with Margaret Thatcher, and I chatted with... Uh, well, not... I chatted several times and met um, a couple of the uh, Greek prime ministers, um, and, and what's interesting is um, common denominator. Uh, uh, Margaret Thatcher is the only leader. Actually, the other two. I mean, to, to put it bluntly, I met one of them, and uh, I said, "What's this? What's going on in Greece? And uh, you know, what's, how are you going to cope with these? I don't know. It's a complete mess. It, it's a complete mess. I just don't know what to do." He said, "That's." the inside information from the boss, right? Recently, Mr. Macron, the president... Oh, by the way, I know someone who knows Macron, and he says he's a very nasty piece of work. Well, Macron recently, with the negotiator, would have to be recently with, um, with the Northern Irish border with the UK and so on. Mm -hmm. He was quoted as saying, I completely understand it. I think it should be really straightforward. And then he, then, then he said, and he didn't realize somebody was listening. He then said, look, I'm sorry, but for my voters, from because my elections are coming up, I've got to be quite nasty about it. I'm warning you. I've actually got to take that line. Interesting. But I don't, but I actually don't really want to, but I have to. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and that was made very, very clear. So he knows it's an, it's an illusion. It's a game. But he's very aware of it. He shouldn't have said that. But it doesn't matter. He's, and you know, that shows a complete lack of integrity. What you were suggesting for a minute politicians don't have integrity now? Well, that's the trouble, isn't it? Because surely one of the most important attributes that you even want your children to have is integrity. I was listening to a podcast uh, the other day uh, by Ian Daly. There's a podcast uh, regarding prime ministers and now prime ministers and presidents. Very, very interesting. Um, and he was covering the fact that leaders, um, you either have it or you don't. You know, you, when you are in the presence of a leader, and I've always believed this, you can have, you've just got the thing. You can call the thing the aura, you can call the thing a genetic thing, whatever that thing is. When that person walks in a room, people stop talking and pay attention. And that's before they've opened their mouths. That's before they've said anything. And these people, no, I, I've, I've seen it myself, I can do it. But I know that people have been put in leadership positions in front of my eyes who could not lead themselves out of a paper bag, but managed to get there by dead man's shoes, right time, right place, whatever, or so to say, licking certain parts of... Affability, likability, that's what gets them elected. That's what gets them elected. In fact, in, fact, in America, it's the square cut of the jaw. Look at even Reagan, back in the 80s. He was a popular actor. People loved him. You know one of the PMs... He couldn't I, have two and two together. I was actually coaching him, and I said, I said to him, you are not for politics, okay? You are too nice. And... And there you go. And he's made a complete balls up. Um, and uh, of course, you don't quite know who it is, so, so that I'm still protected. But um, nearly, nearly, you, nearly, you just about got away with it. Indeed, indeed, because there's two of them, aren't there? So you, um, but but it's absolutely. I nearly, shocking. I nearly said a woman, but yeah. Anyway. But, but of course, they, and and these guys rely on their on their nepotism and family name. The, I, I think if you go back to the conversation we were having offline just before we started, what I was saying to you was, oh, how we started this conversation, sorry, we were talking about the a year ago people couldn't see what we see in terms of lockdowns being draconian and, 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 and a symptom of lack of leadership and understanding. It, 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 there is no have you tried thinking talking, behind that at all. Have you tried talking to someone wearing a mask and being very, very polite to them? and mm. saying, um, okay, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to argue, I, I, I can totally respect you wearing a mask. Did you know that every single study that's been done shows that masks actually harm you? Yes, I've heard recently, actually. And no, but have you actually, have you actually said that to someone wearing a mask? No. Mm -hmm. I have, uh, or rather I, I've done it on social media, just as an experiment. 
And what they do is they become, they start hurling insults and telling you, telling you not to troll them, telling you not to insult them, calling names. Yes, but the people that are on social media, yeah, the people that are on social media are generally people who are negative, who are looking for an argument. Yeah, but here's the thing, but one second, the, the, I'm, I'm coming full circle. Okay. They also get support from all their other little, little group narrative people. Um, we know and then they all come back. So we know. this is the thing. But the point is, mm. scapegoating. These guys, as I said to you, they they know in their heart of hearts it's complete nonsense. So they've got this internal discomfort, which they then expel and displace on a scapegoat. But of course they do, and, that, and that's how, unfortunately. But what happens because because of that is then it removes individual thought. So what you have a lot of people that will literally, as a as an immediate reaction, will go no. That's their fault. Have That's you tried doing it on someone who is grotesquely fat? Hold on. Remember we were having a conversation here with a lady when we were queuing up a few, yes. a few months ago. Yes. We had, and you were very kindly uh, explaining with facts. QED data. With yeah. facts, exactly. As to why. This person, I don't know, junior lawyer, whatever she was, educated, you could see, you know, with it, bright. It didn't, because she was intelligent, it didn't take long for her to start asking questions. Go, what do you mean? And I didn't quite know that, but it got her thinking. But the point is, until that moment, that person of a certain level of intelligence was not thinking. She was just taking it lying down. You know, the back to the cases. And whatnot. If we go because, back to the original point of, if we go back to the original point of lockdown, and that was again, done in a knee-jerk way with everybody following each other because nobody really knew what to do because there is now a, a, a leader, a proper leader anywhere that I'm aware of. And then a year now, today, we were to, I was talking to you about, okay, now we've got stage two. Stage one was most people couldn't see that lockdown was ridiculous. And we were t saying it from day one on this podcast saying, excuse me, can't, can nobody see it? This is this is not only stupid, this doesn't have any evidence, any data, any rational thought, any commentary, nothing. There is no reason to, in fact, this will harm people. You said it from day one, mental health-wise, mentally, psychologically, because we're already in broken communities and we're not communicating well with each other anyway, this will put us back in years. Now, a year and a bit later, here we are sitting in the same coffee bar that we're allowed to sit in, thank God, um, and I'm I, I, for I, the moment. Oh yes, that may change. Yeah, because Europe's getting. Thank you, Austria. Europe is yeah. uh, going the merry round. Thank you, Austria. And again. Germany are following behind now. They here. Are. Uh, they're, they're voting on it at the moment this morning. Greece is way down the line. Whoa. Even now, they're mm. talking about shutting everything down. And idiots. So, 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 so it. So that tells you. But we, we, we'll digress a little bit. That tells you that. Even with going through the experience, okay, you could argue before, the only excuse was we've never been in this situation before. So even if you took that as a good reason, say, okay, you shouldn't be thinking like this anyway, but okay, I take that as face value as a reason. 18 months later, here we go again. So that tells me that the people running our countries are completely clueless. They are, but, but are but they- But then the mental health now- No, 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 hang on, are they that clueless? For instance, my argument would be, do we know? Oh, they're narcissists. Do, no, not quite. Do we know the other problems going on within those countries? Give you an example. If you look at government debt and you look at the world, the UK is, I think, seventh on down the list. Greece is not only at the top; it's 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 in its own it's division. Double. Yeah, exactly. It's thank you. It's it's an order of magnitude higher than everyone well, Greece else. Greece went bankrupt. I'm sorry. Well, it, 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 but but. But, so it's very easy to see the advantage of, of, um, of generating more hubris about this illusionary predator it and covers the multitude it. of sin. That's it. Because so, you could spend so, three times more and no one would say yeah, a thing. So what about Germany? You see, Germany, big problems in Germany. Massive, much bigger than people understand. And Merkel, of course, can't wait to just retire. And what, why? Give me an example. What do you mean big problems? Well, know? money, immigrants. And and uh, Austria, I don't know about. I wouldn't be surprised um, that they're in deep trouble. So that's the reason why you think we're going, we're starting with this again. That's it. That's, that's, the, again, back to, logic. back to the point I was trying to make with 
looking at things as they are today and net the same majority populists are not seeing what we're seeing and i'm not saying we're right but i'm i'm just quite amazed that it's so obvious that because people can't see it. I said the people mental are... health the con let me the consequences of what we've just been through will be seen for years to come well look at this years. one remember i said a couple of podcasts ago people are dumb now what i mean by that is 98 percent of decisions and behavior is emotion based you don't actually engage your cerebral cortex that's why i said dumb i'm dumb you're dumb the people are naturally dumb it takes a lot of thinking in the minority of individuals for them to see any common sense at all and that's why you can get people most people doing idiotic things because they don't engage their cerebral cortex why because we're conditioned to respond to authority we're conditioned to want a quick fix to our anxiety and adding political correctness which you've been talking about way before you invited me on this podcast uh, three, four years ago, and people are afraid to say anything. Because if you say something on social media, you'll be vilified. If you say something to some of your friends, you'll be judged. Well, look at this way. Let, let, let me put, give you the example of this uh, little cricketer chap who's been on the news constantly and being interviewed constantly. Yeah. Um, and and everyone was going. The interviewers were treating him like like the most delicate little piece oh, of no. tissue paper. Yeah. And, and uh, indeed, and then suddenly it turns out that he was busy making um, anti-Semitic comments, and suddenly they've all jumped back and dropped him like a scalded cat. Mm. Now, now, political correctness gone crazy, and transgender toilets gone crazy, and John Lewis uh, dropping red and blue colours from his children's clothes gone crazy. Mm? So we're back to. So we're back to. Is, is lack of structure. Is it anywhere where you get lack of structure, you're going to get, because we need leadership. So what you're going to get is you're going to get a, a, a bastardized, deformed type of leadership emerging. And you, you, for instance, if you, if you look back the, the throughout genocides, it, it's scapegoating, whether it's, whether it's witches in, or whether it's the Spanish Inquisition, whether it's Jews by the Germans, it's all scapegoating. You think that Germany would have been able to to start up without the fact that it was in deep, deep trouble economically because because the Great Recession in America triggered the banks foreclosing on the German loans. So the German economy was in deep trouble. So what do they do? Everyone's miserable. So suddenly they feel all better by blaming it on the Jews. And by objectifying them so that then you can do any kind of scapegoating again. Even serial murderers, they objectify to do what they do. Yeah, but now you're making, I think, two points in that. Now, there's two points that come out of that. It's you've got the politicians and governments that will never, ever take any ownership in what they do. Can't. So this, this can't. Is, can't. This is perfect. But then on a societal level, you and me, the people around us, for years now, I'm again worked in businesses. I've, I've trained people. I've coached people, and taking a sense of ownership for yourself, not possible. Forget for your job, for yourself. I have made this. I've made a mistake. Put my hands up. I take ownership of this. Let's move on. Let's get better. Lesson learned. There's so little of it. That's why that is being taught on a group level. The power, you see. Yeah, but that's, that's been taught in coaching on a group level in some companies. Yeah. And, and, and the point that, that goes within there some ways, we need to take a sense of ownership. The whole, the Mercedes do it in Formula 1, the whole transparent yeah. thing, and yeah. we don't make mistakes, and we make is, mistakes, but we learn from them. It's the, okay to make a mistake, you know, right. we, we, you don't have to hide behind but, it. But, but the, the origin of all of that, you see, is religion, because you, you have the sacrificial lamb already, that's illusionary. So you, the, it could, that an illusionary sacrificial land can absorb anything permanently, and it allows you to say, "I got it, screw up." I did. When I was God still loves when me. I was a kid and I went to Sunday school and I went to mass every Sunday at my local church, I used to because of my dry humour. I asked the father the question once in Sunday school. He came in and said, "Hello, kid. You know, how are you?" And what we were being taught our, our Bible or whatever parts of the Bible we, we were being taught, and uh, we had to draw pictures or whatever it was. 
And I said, Father, and I, again, cheeky chap, I went, Father, isn't it, isn't it a bit too convenient? Isn't it a bit strange that you can sin? Basically, you can sin as much as you want, or sin, full stop. I can come on Sunday, I get into a box, you're on one side, I'm on the other. You ask me, tell me, tell me, son, what are your sins? You absolve me after about 10, 15 minutes, I leave feeling great. <laughs> How does that work? Shouldn't you not sit in the first place? Surely. Yes, but it's not as easy as that. Because, and I've no idea what he said afterwards, because it was a, I don't know, it was, it was, it was in, but you see, spoke in tongues. But the point is this. If you feel bad about yourself, then the only, you've got two options. Continue feeling bad about yourself and being self-destructive. Or, or expel your bad feelings onto someone else. And, and the beauty with the confessional is, as you quite rightly said, you had your therapy. You, you left feeling great. And if, if God loves you, you can love yourself. And if you love yourself, guess what? You're, you're bound to make much better decisions and behave better. And you're forgiven. Win-win. Win-win. So, so therefore, the, 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 good, the good results are seen in reality, in behavior. Whereas scapegoating just allows the, the scapegoating in modern society simply allows the toxic effect to continue. And the politicians in governments have just taken it to a whole new level. Now, finally embracing social media rather than it working against them, they use it for their purposes, for what they want to do, which is, oh, I'm going to put these emergency, vote for these emergency powers again and renew them because, hey, I don't need parliament to, to vote because, God forbid, they might disagree. Yes. Um, B, I can more or less do what I want. I can buy equipment, buy PPE, emergency budget, take 4 billion from here, 10 billion from there, and no one can actually judge me for it. Because I'm allowed. And okay, I these might, are emergency powers. I might have to be a little bit more careful in giving the contracts to my cronies. But apart from that, but I did anyway. Yes. <laughs> and and did you hear the latest revelations? Dominic Cummings was was saying that when uh, Boris was PM, he started saying, "Ooh, I find this PM stuff rather boring. I'd rather be writing a book on Shakespeare." And oh, this he says, is "Still leading our country." He is. Excellent. And and, uh, Excellent. and then Dominic Cummings says, "Well, I think the electorate quite want you to do the job of PM." So then, as we know, then because it didn't quite work out, Mr. PM used the special advisor, the senior special advisor, as the scapegoat. <laughs> Beautifully put. He turned the tables. That's it. Because <laughs> he realised that Cummings was, let's say, not quite as uh, sincere in his, uh, in, his um, but it, in his intentions. It didn't work out, unfortunately, because everyone around him also is completely <laughs> insincere and, and, and a bad example. He's just a leader. He's, he's just the most insincere or the leader of the same rabble, the, 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 the same crowd, uh, essentially. And, um, of course, going back to mental health, of course, yeah. is is uh, what people aren't doing. Because, of course, whilst they're busy virtue signalling and, and scapegoating and fitting in with a group, global Sounds narrative, 40% yeah. of, of uh, adults have suffered from depression during the last lockdown. 60% of kids have suffered from depression in the last lockdown. Self-harming, especially amongst girls, is an epidemic. Plus, um, something like 60 to 70% of adults have put on weight, and weight gain, type two diabetes, is the major number one risk factor for cardiovascular disease, which is the number one risk factor for poor, poor outcome in COVID. Plus stress is the other, is the other uh, predictor of poor outcome in COVID. So lockdown and the general management of it has massively increased the risk factors for COVID. Now let's have let's turn the table. Ironic. That's the, indeed ironic. Horrible irony. And now let's have a look at um, the fact that the vaccine doesn't stop transmission, it doesn't stop you getting it, um, and may uh, and but it, it certainly does improve the outcome. But recent studies showed that the main improvement in outcome occurs in the younger age groups, not the older. So here's the other point. The younger age groups are the least vulnerable. So therefore the improvement in outcome is less necessary. Which is quite obvious, but I think you, you going back on the original point you made about the, the, um, the consequences of lockdown, the moment you stopped 
human beings, kids specifically, not going to school anymore. Yeah. They couldn't interact anymore. They suddenly were stuck at home, being taught in a substandard fashion at best via a small screen, because it's only a small screen. You don't want to do via a smart television, because very few people have them. And that's how you were schooled for more or less a year. Now, that has really, really affected teenagers especially. Of course it has. I mean, in fact, everyone knows that, you know, despite the best efforts of, of teachers, yeah. everyone knows that almost all children went backwards uh, and they were seriously damaged. And, and of course, if you believe in conspiracy theories, um, we know, well, we, the thing is that even if you don't believe in conspiracy theories, we know for a fact that Women's Live was funded by the Rockefellers and the CIA funded the major feminist magazine. With the, with the objective of of destroying family life, because then you want two loads of taxpayers. Why? Because if you have two loads of taxpayers, the government can simply borrow more money from the central banks, because the central banks are the ones that print the money. And the central banks, at some level, will then have to, will, will then be uh, giving benefits to the people who control them. But Such it, as the big names again. But you made me think of a radio program I was listening to um, recently, and or just generally listening to to comments on radio, you know, mildly intelligent radio, let's call it talk radio. And what I'm hearing a lot because we're saying about political correctness, about scapegoating, about you know, it's not my fault, gov. It's always somebody else's. Some other now, no, that was COVID's fault. Everything is sorry. You can't walk in. That's COVID. It, it, you, you don't even finish your sentence. The word COVID is used. But um, I, no, I've, I've, I've lost my train of thought now. I, just, I, I had it, I had it, it's gone. Gee, well, your GPs, just, GPs, for instance, they, I've just done an where, where does, where, where on earth do GPs think they get off on saying they're too busy to see patients face to face when, when they function? You see, this is the crazy thing. GPs have always seen people face to face. They've always done home visits. And then suddenly, at the drop of a hat, they're saying, well, we're too busy. And in fact, um, uh, we can see a lot more people online. There you go. The governments know, people don't, the governments know that the amount of beds in the UK has gone down by, I think, about 10% over the last 20 years. So there's less beds for people to lie in, okay? Fact. So the capacity mm -hmm. has been reduced over the years. That is a known fact. Yet, we are pushing more people to go straight to hospitals, which are at full capacity already, or near enough, and that will be used as an excuse because, and I don't mean this flippantly, but sarcastically, we have to save the NHS. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, oh, we're going to have to keep you at home over Christmas. This is coming. It's so obvious it's coming because I'm afraid we can't fit you in the hospitals anymore. And part of what you said is the reason why. If you could have a face-to-face, -face, now remember, we were talking about psychological issues, depression, uh, lack of self-esteem, you need contact. So, so many people, the older generation, have had no contact for a year and a half because they're scared. Why were they scared? We know why. This was absolutely atrocious. It was horrible, uh, scaring the living daylights. Of people. And these people now don't want to go out, but they do want to see their GP. And they're just a few little words, 10 minutes in a seat in front of a GP, okay, with a mask. And the GP said, talk me through. Why mask? Masks don't work. Whatever. I know. I know. Whatever, meaning point. following the protocol. And then that person, who probably doesn't really have any proper ailments, but just needs to be spoke, just needs to speak to a learned one, needs to speak to his doctor, feel better, to be told, no, you're okay, you just need to do this. I mean, for instance, that would alleviate the issue that we've got of people going straight to hospitals. Well, you see the other trouble. You've got people sitting in ambulances waiting to go to the waiting area. Don't forget that depression is a risk factor for cardiovascular disease and stroke and diabetes. And, and just, a, just as an aside, of the excess mortality over and above the seasonal norm at the moment, only 40% of it is attributable, attributable to COVID. That means 60% is non-COVID related. And now the question is, is it because people are dying from other conditions because lockdown has stressed them so much? Is it because people are not going to hospital and dying at home? Is it because the vaccine is actually secretly, uh, has secretly underreported side effects? We know the studies show that the side effects and mortality is un underreported by a factor of up to 10.
Okay. Do you know what scares me? And you can maybe say it's actually already happening now. What scares me is if we will not find out the full extent of it for a few years, because then that 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 basically allows the governments who are probably not going to be in power anymore not to be taken, not to be uh, take, uh, um, pulled to account. I would argue now, it's just common sense, I don't have the stats that you've got or the figures that you've got, I would argue right now, purely the consequences of lockdown, the consequences caused by COVID, which we could have handled in a much more pragmatic, sensible, measured, intelligent way, will have caused many, many times more deaths than COVID that caused itself. And when I mean COVID, I mean purely COVID. I don't mean the rubber stamp on somebody that already had existing conditions. Correct. But and I again, would love to still know how many of them there are because we don't know. What we do know is that um, in America, out of 74 million children, uh, 15 have apparently died from COVID who were healthy versus a much, much higher risk of giving the vaccine. 15 as in 15 people. 15 people, 15 healthy children out of 74 million. And oh, let's vaccinate all of them. Hmm? And indeed, the, the, there was an interesting but little it's video. Back to the management of, of all of this. Correct. It's, it's and, and, there's a, there's an, and that's the point to make. There is no management. For instance, there's a, there's a video, a, a, a recording of the Brazilian PM cornering Tedros, the, the leader of the WHO, um, at a conference and, and saying, I don't know what to do. What's, what's the latest on how to manage COVID? I mean, uh, it, it, you know, do we give vaccines, do we not? And essentially, the two of them were just having this weird talk. And it's interesting to see Finally. what they talk about when they think nobody's watching. And what, and, and what response did he get? Well, not much is the answer, apart from the WHO not recommending vaccine passports and not recommending children to be vaccinated. And originally not recommending masks either. Well, they didn't. Yeah, indeed, indeed. From um, day one. Yeah. And continuously afterwards. Mm. And and the, the other point to make is, is that, as you said, not only are there going to be enormous health ramifications, um, but but which will have epigenetic effects. In other words, the expression yeah. of our genes will be changed by the stress that we've gone through. Really? Of course. Wow. We've, we've mentioned that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but as, as we said, as we said, the, the level of government debt is now historically high. Uh, and in fact, it's the, it's the highest since the 1960s. And the only time it was highest, higher than that, was immediately after the Second World War. <laughs> and for what? Alexis, and how long did it take to pay that debt off? Well, so it hasn't been paid off as No, the time. UK paid the, the debt of the Second World War approximately 10 years ago. Oh, okay. So it took, whatever it was, 65 years to pay that debt off. Now, only the only reason the UK government and others across the world have been able to get as much debt as that because it's cheap. Uh, the interest rates of, 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 of 30, 40 years ago are nothing compared to now. Now you can get something for 2%. Well, they, they're, they're, they're saying, you know what, it's cheap. Let's, let's bring it on. Let, let, let's take 150 billion. But the trouble is, you see, year, with the, the, the people don't understand the reason why inflation exists. It's, it's, it's pure. It's supply and demand. If you, if you allow credit, then you increase the demand. So the, the prices go up. It's very simple. If you don't allow credit, there's less demand, prices have to stay low. Like, for instance, if you're selling something to me and you know I can easily apply for credit and buy it, you'll go, okay, uh, you raise your price, don't you? If you know you don't have much hope of, of selling it because people can't get credit, you'll be as reasonable as possible. And the same principle applies now, which is why we're going to get stratospheric inflation coming up. It's already started. And it's why we're going to have an enormous global recession when money will drastically lose its value. Imagine the effects on mental health of that. Um, so, shall we, shall we wrap up? Because I think we've come to, the, well, let's, to let's, that junction. Let's bring back the original point of that we to make to reassure people that studies show that economic catastrophe increases the lifespan of countries because it forces them to give up modern life and move back in with their grandparents and simply enjoy the simple things in life. 
And therefore, the, the irony is that the stress of modern life is more lethal than coronavirus or any government. So whatever happens, ladies and gentlemen, you will be okay as long as you focus on the simple things in life, which is your family and your community, and value them and bless them. On that note, thank you very much again. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.